You hear a lot about home ownership as the American dream. There's a lot of political rhetoric around home ownership. So for me, I think that that in some ways home ownership is an advertising campaign, uh, saying you too can make your wealth this way. You can buy in. You can invest in in this community. And I think in some ways it is that. It is an opportunity to accumulate wealth. It's an opportunity to invest in a neighborhood. But especially as we've seen lately, it's also a risk. Home ownership is a risk. If the housing market goes bad, that does put people at risk. If uh, the home ownership opportunities are in neighborhoods where services aren't available, that also puts people and families at risk. More often than not, when somebody purchases a home, um, they have to borrow money to purchase the home. Um, and in exchange, the person that lends them the money um, essentially has a right uh, or an interest in their home. Uh, if the homeowner fails to pay that debt off on a regular basis, uh, the lender has a right to foreclose, essentially to take steps to take the property back. Uh, the property is, is essentially security for their financial loan. Uh, the ability to own a home, uh, if someone was able to do that, plays a very uh, deep um, role in who they are and if a home was to be lost. Just the cost that it, uh, it, it incurs to the community can be looked at in so many different perspectives. I mean, straight financial in terms of depreciating the, the value of homes throughout the neighborhood. If a house is left, uh, is left abandoned, and, and some of the elements that um, that encourages to the community, um, squatters, uh, drug use, um, it, it just uh, not, it's, it's far more than just an eyesore, it actually becomes a, a hazard. Of course, uh, this is a, a huge challenge, uh, not only to these families, but also to our collective economy. The reason why foreclosures are becoming a, a big problem, both nationally and internationally at the moment, is because um, lending institutions and other big corporations got into the mortgage business because of the rate of return on their investment is quite large. Um, for example, if uh, an individual borrows $300,000 from a lending institution, over the life of that loan they'll be paying back $718,000. That is a rate of return greater than 100%. Of course, the banks don't want to own houses. That's not what they do. But they found themselves with a huge inventory of houses that they were trying to get rid of on the cheap. Uh, in many cases, they couldn't. And so what you have in, in places like Newark, Irvington, Orange, but also the, the rich suburbs, is an immense number of houses that have been foreclosed on. Obviously, this is a time of subprime crisis. So we're responding to that with a great partnership that cuts across sectors in Newark, from the business community, from the city itself, to nonprofits and CDCs and clergy coming together to really do a grassroots campaign to let people know that there are options, that you don't have to, first of all, think of this as some kind of secret shame. The reality is there's millions of Americans now facing trouble, and you have to step up and speak out and say, I need help. The Newark Essex Foreclosure Task Force uh, came together to do three things. It is to serve as a platform for the various groups that are working on foreclosure from different counseling agencies to nonprofits to universities, uh, research professors to government entities uh, to all communicate with each other about their work and coordinate on activities. That's one purpose. The second is to actually spin off programs and events that help homeowners and renters avoid foreclosure wherever possible or find a next best possible alternative if they do have to move. And a third is to serve as a local anchor for advocacy on policy and on legislation to make sure that uh, the needs and the voices, especially of low-income uh, urban residents, are being heard in the foreclosure debate. I mean, it, the Newark uh, story is, is tragic in many ways because here's uh, a place that was finally getting onto its feet. Um, Newark suffered a double blow. Initially, uh, back in the um, 1950s uh, and early 60s, they suffered redlining. Nobody would give them mortgages. Um, uh, as white people left and black people came in, many banks had um, policies where if a neighborhood was quote unquote changing, meaning that, again, the racial composition was changing, that meant that the neighborhood was risky, that meant you didn't give loans there, you just wrote it off. So 
uh, no matter what the economic level of African Americans say moving into a community, they could uh, be of the identical economic status as the white people who are moving out, uh, they were facing much bigger obstacles because they, they couldn't get the kind of loans and the kind of rates that white people got. But they got in anyway, they managed, they got properties, they kept them, they held them. And these communities like um, Valesburg that were just, um, you know, that were hanging on and that were again house rich but maybe cash poor, uh, then get targeted with the second wave of predatory lending to take the houses away by um, convincing them to sign on for loans that seemed easy and no fault, no problem, but once you sign that paper, you're stuck and um, the rates go up, you can't make a payment, there goes the house. When facing foreclosure, uh, residents may want to contact legal services to see if they may have been the victim of a predatory loan. Our area, unfortunately, has seen a lot of targeting for uh, irresponsible, in some cases, illegal lending practices. And there are people who may be able to keep their home through a legal process with the help of a legal uh, aid attorney. One of the things that I believe um, that people should do if they are facing foreclosure would be first and foremost is to open their mail when they receive it from the mortgage company. And once they have received their mail, they really do need to try to contact their mortgage company, try to work something out. I know that you know, through uh, literature that the New York Essex Foreclosure Task Force has put out, there are uh, HUD certified agencies, certified counselors that can help you. Don't call the numbers off the signs on the telephone poles. They just want to steal your house. If somebody wants to help you with your mortgage and they want it, but you have to pay them, um, then look for somebody else. There's there's free help out there. So don't give up hope. This is 995 hope, um, um, and uh, you know ask around and, and tell people about your situation and find out what resources are available. Well, this is definitely a time of crisis in Newark, but it's also a time of tremendous opportunity because Newark is a city of promise, it's a city of hope. Uh, we are a mecca of the arts. We're the first rate, world class uh, uh, performing arts center, a museum that's second to none, an incredible library. The fact that we have a, a transportation hub that provides so many opportunities for commerce and opportunities for everyone in the city to learn and connect all the parts of this city together. So my hope is that we continue to strengthen and grassroots coalitions to reach out to individuals to let them know what their rights are and let them know that they have options uh, let them know that there are people there to help them that we're strong we're enduring we're resilient and when we come together there's nothing we can't build or create because that's what America is we're not a perfect country but we're called towards a perfect mission and we have to continue to get better and better and better and the only way I know to do that is if people really work together it's the hallmark of our country this idea of e pluribus unum from the many the one and we're gonna have strength if we stick together uh, as a United States as a united people with a united mission <laughs>